right, hello everyone and welcome to the virtual college exploration for North and South Carolina students sponsored by the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thank you all so much for joining us today. So just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A box at any time on your screen to type questions to our presenters. Um, your camera and microphone are turned off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at CACRAO.org. The presentation is being recorded and will be made available within about a week at the same website, CACRAO.org. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Keith Doucette. I am a regional admissions counselor with St. Andrews University. Uh, and today we have a fantastic uh, panel put together for you guys to really discuss esports and some opportunities that are out there in today's world and how that may translate in your high school, your community, your college church, uh, and even into your career. Um, so I got our presentation up here. I'm just going to do a quick um, quick change on my end so I can see what I'm doing, and then we're going to go from there. Um, so our, our panel is today does have individuals from uh, Newberry College as well as the Living Arts College. Uh, and the way that we're going to go is we're going to do some, just a brief touch on uh, some of the basics of eSports and kind of what our goals are for this session. Uh, we're guessing that many of you guys are joining us here today because uh, you do enjoy video games, you are a gamer. Actually, why don't you raise your hand right now if you are, you're an active gamer. This is just a test. We can't see you at all, so I don't know if you're raising your hand, but if you did, good job. Um, but we're going to talk about how, uh, what, what some of the important things about esports are in today's world. Um, so let's go ahead and kind of get started, uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, what are esports? Uh, and I guess the short answer is competitive multiplayer gaming. You know, this is something that can be done in a variety of places, uh, in a variety of ways. There's many different games to play. Some of you guys have your favorites. Some of them, you, some of you may like to play multiple different games, uh, and some like to play just for fun. While others in the in the esports world are are going after. Um, sponsorships, uh, big prizes at online tournaments uh, that may be happening in their community or even throughout the world. Uh, some of the goals of our presentation today are going to be that we're going to discuss the esports market. What, what, what is esports in today's world? What does the future look like in the world of esports? Uh, how to get involved in your high school community, your college. And uh, now if you're thinking about, hey, I'd love to be a competitive collegiate gamer. How do, you, how do you get recruited to a college? What is that process like in the world of esports as compared to, to non -tradi uh, other traditional athletics? Are there scholarship opportunities and how can you go after some of that scholarship money? And then we're gonna wrap up with careers in the field. Uh, but before we get into the meat and potatoes of all of this on esports, we do wanna introduce the U institutions that we are all coming from today. And I'm gonna start off with, as I mentioned before, uh, I work with St. Andrews University. If you're not familiar with us, we are a small uh, private university that's located uh, in Laurenburg, North Carolina. If you're not familiar with Laurenburg, it is right on the South Carolina, North Carolina border. It's about two hours east of Charlotte, about an hour and a half to two hours west of Wilmington and the beaches of that area or even the beaches of South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. Um, we like to say we're about two hours from, from so many different things. But what you get in Laurenburg is some small town charm. Uh, we are a small university. That what that means is that we actually have less than a thousand total students in our student body. And what that translates is to a tight-knit educational community. Uh, our university is, is based on kind of four key pillars that you can see here. And I'll start down the, the lower left-hand corner. Uh, tradition, our university dates back to 1896. And we have some really strong traditions that act as a foundation for all of our students to build off of. They can start their new traditions, but those traditions that we've had in place for a while act as those building blocks to allow students to jump forward uh, with their education and into their careers. Next up uh, is global. We understand that today's world is a global world, the global marketplace. So getting prepared for that. And what that does at our university is through our international student population, through our study abroad trips, it gives students a chance to really uh, 
interact and gain a deeper understanding of cultures that are different than their own that they may have grown up in. Uh, the next one is experience. Obviously at college, part of the experience is the academic experience. In St. Andrews, we offer 22 different majors, uh, 22 different minors. We have uh, specific majors that do even focus on esports. We have a um, sport management degree with a specialization in esports. So even on the academic side, esports are involved. Uh, but our most popular degree programs are, are, are probably our business program, as well as uh, some of our, our life and health sciences and our education. Uh, experience also ties into athletics. We have 27 varsity intercollegiate athletic programs that does include esports, uh, but we also have others like football. Uh, we have uh, women's volleyball. We even have uh, equestrian. Uh, we have actually over 100 university owned horses at St. Andrews University. Uh, and then we have a variety of clubs and organizations that students can get, get involved in to build leadership skills. Uh, our final pillar is community, and that's the most important to us. Again, we are a close-knit educational community. We're a place where our students really get to be known. It's a supportive and caring place, uh, and we really uh, relish in the diversity that we have represented within our, our student body. So that's a little bit about St. Andrews. I'm going to actually pitch it over to Newberry College right now. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Clarissa Oreck, and I am one of the admissions counselors here at Newberry College. Um, our topic today is esports, but I would like to give you a few quick facts, as you can see, um, about our institution so you can learn a little bit more about us. Um, we're already just a little bit bigger with around 1,200 students, but we still are that small family knit campus. So you get that one on one time a lot with the professors with our class ratio of 13 to 1. Um, so you really get to know the professors, they get to know you, how you study, learn, internship opportunities, being able to take a really advantage of those opportunities as well. We're very representative. Um, we are very diverse with 21 states and 23 countries. Uh, with our academics, um, we're a liberal arts college and we do offer pretty much almost everything. As you'll see when you go to our website, uh, we have 33 majors and 31 minors. Uh, if you're looking for a pre-professional track we, that has the word pre in it, we probably offer it. So we have pre-dental, law, pre-med, pre-vet, seminary, a little bit of everything. We do also have some partnerships with um, some other universities to offer some other bachelor's degrees as well as master's and doctoral programs. So if, say for example, if you're interested in engineering, we do partner with Clemson to offer that part as well. And just to kind of touch a base on our finances section, um, we are actually, for the year of 2020, Newberry College was actually voted number one for the least amount of student loan debt with our graduates. And that's for both public and private universities. So that's one little pride point there that I always like to mention. And we do also offer that variety of campus life as far as um, NCAA Division II athletics. If you're interested in being a student athlete, study abroad, over 50 different clubs you can join and get started as well if you are interested in that. Fraternity and sororities, Greek life, honor societies, like I mentioned, with us being liberal arts, um, located in the heart of Newberry, South Carolina, just right above the Capitol, we have a little bit of everything. And in a couple hours, you can get to the mountains and beach and all that fun stuff as well. So now I'm going to turn it over to Bernard um, at the Living Arts College, so he can give you a few facts about his school as well. All right, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Hope everyone has had a wonderful day. My name is Bernard Allen, uh, Director of Admissions here at Living Arts College, located in the capital city of the state of North Carolina, which is Raleigh, North Carolina, slap dab in the middle of the state, we're a couple hours from Charlotte, a couple hours from Richmond, Virginia, a couple hours to Wilmington, a few hours to Asheville and the mountains. Uh, here at Living Arts College, we are a small private institution. Uh, we're an art school. Uh, we are, our slogan is we are America's creativity college. And we offer six, uh, unique programs, animation, film, photography, audio, interactive media, and interior design, uh, because we part of our animation program is game design, uh, which leads us into eSports. As we are developing in, in uh, our eSports program, uh, first through intramurals, then of course later on we will have our team 
uh, coming on board. So we are extremely excited uh, here at Living Arts College uh, for eSports. Uh, as you can tell, behind me is a shot of our uh, wonderful and unique domed campus uh, here in Raleigh, North Carolina. So we, we look forward to uh, giving you information today. Uh, if you would like to uh, learn more about our application processes, visit our website. You'll see that uh, later on as well. Um, and so we will, um, we offer a Bachelor of Art degree in each of our programs. Uh, and we have a wonderful uh, creative student body uh, that have mastered uh, the own uh, hands-on uh, technique of education. Uh, and so we don't offer lecture uh, style classes, but we are hands-on college uh, with bachelor art degrees in all six of our programs. And so uh, that's a quick overview of Living Arts College. Uh, we'll head on over now uh, to Patrick. Fantastic. Thank you both uh, Clarissa and Bernard for sharing a, just a touch about what uh, your different institutions have to offer. Uh, we are going to let you guys know if you're interested in any of the organizations or institutions uh, involved in today's panel, how you can actually get more information through our individual info sessions. But right now I want to dive into the, the, the key topic matter of today's panel. And to do that, I want to introduce Patrick Stevenson. Uh, as you can see down in on the screen, he is a gamer, cosplayer, Pokemon trainer, Keyblade master, and my personal favorite part-time Sith Lord. Uh, so Patrick, welcome. He is actually one of our admissions counselors at St. Andrews, but also is very involved in our esports program. Hi guys, uh, like Mr. Keith said, my name is Patrick Stevenson, and I am here to give you a quick view of esports. So the real world in esports, how to turn your love of video games into a livable career or prove to your parents that you're not really wasting time upstairs for hours upon hours. Um, the first thing I'd like to talk about when we go into esports is that esports is everywhere. Esports is in your modern day. Esports is something that you know, is no longer just what you do with your friends in maybe the laundromat. I remember playing Street Fighter when my grandmother would take us to the laundromat to do our clothes. Now you can see esports and competitive video gaming anywhere from Disney XD to ESPN2, ESPN8, the Ocho, and even on your ESPN app last night when they were playing Steelers versus the Giants game, they also had Rocket League playing. So it is a billion dollar industry that is here to stay. Um, unlike most sports in the college spectrum where you don't always get a payout in cash or even you're not allowed to pay out for cash prizes when you win, when you win in a lot of esports games, you will see that monetary fund come back to the team, even if it's just equipment. Um, that cash prize ranges from anywhere to the hundreds to the millions of dollars. We saw last year or the year before, you can win about $2.3 million for winning in Fortnite. Um, Esports has a global presence. It's in merchandising. It's in the ease of access for people to know how to play or the availability to play. So you don't always have to have a console to be able to play. You can have a smartphone. You can have a computer. It is easy for anyone to be able to play. And it's very accessible for people to be able to play, indicative of what economic status you come from or what markets you're coming from. Mr. Keith? Um, the market for esports is wide. Esports is one of the most adaptable markets that you could have. Video gaming is one of the most adaptable markets you can have. It tailors to so many people and it is very easy to understand. Um, esports takes what we call hyper inclusivity. So it tailors to any race, religion, creed, gender. And I put a couple of examples. So anybody who's ever played video games or is even in the video gaming sphere, has seen Spider-Man, you've seen the Mafia 3, you've seen Detroit Becoming Human. If you've come up recently, you've seen Ghost of Tsushima. So different storylines tailored to different people and give you a different view of what the world is actually looking like. So when you go out into a market, you can't say, we only tailor to people who play PlayStation, or we only tailor to people who play Xbox. You will see esports in all of the different markets and in different variations and their ability to have that wide breadth and depth of marketability. Um, the leaders in technology. A lot of the technology that you get starts off as video games. So all of the things you see on maybe your smartphone, 
usually are implemented in video games before they're implemented in modern day technology like smart, smart smartphones, computers, um, even quantum computing starts off in video games before it gets tailored over into the spectrum of accessibility in homes. Mr. Keith? What is the outlook for the future of esports? Um, like previously stated, esports is here to stay, or video gaming is here to stay. Th uh, four and five households have a video game console, whether that's PC, um, whether that's Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, or even just the handhelds like a Game Boy. Most homes in America have an esports, or have a accessibility to esports and video games. Um, and that's just taking the American market. That's not including the Chinese market, the European market, um, or any of the South American markets as well. And then you also see your favorite innovations in esports, in books, in media, television series, et cetera. And so this is the part where a lot of students come to me and they say, Mr. Stevenson, how do I get esports at my high school? And how do I convince my school to let us play video games and go out and do things that we really like because not every student is going to be an athlete in the physical realm. So what we will tell you is it builds diversity in your resume. When you go up to a college, they'll ask you what separates you from every student standing next to you. I was a part of the introductory team or the flagship esports team at my school and we won at X, Y, and Z tournament. Um, it widens your prospects of colleges. You have three colleges here in the CACRO event that offer scholarship money for esports or even offer team and club level sports, uh, club level events for the esports competition. It expands your marketability in the job field. They'll ask you what you did, um, what separates you again from everyone standing next to you. I competed in the east, I competed in esports. I competed in a realm where you don't necessarily know what the next person is going to do or where the training for them comes from. So, unlike the sport I played in college football, you can see those, uh, you can see those students on television, you can see those students in film, there's no way to get a litmus for esports. So you have to be able to cooperate in a team and react and act on the fly. Um, it incorporates the non traditional athletes as previously stated, not every student is equipped to play sports in a physical realm. But everyone has a video game that they love, or everyone is able to understand and adapt to a video game that they either just found out, just find, have a friend who's interested in, and we take the most common example is Call of Duty. Everyone knows somebody who plays Call of Duty, Madden, or NBA 2K. Um, and I think the most important part to talk about is it build your computer programs at your school. To get new programs at some schools, they have an esports team. And in order for their esports teams to be competitive, they have to expand their computer labs giving the school more funding, giving the school more accessibility to internet and resources. Mr. Keith? And now we talk about your college opportunities. Um, a lot of this will Paul Parrott some of the opportunities for the high school level, but at the college level, it gives you a way to get to school. Um, Esports can be your vehicle to get an education. Esports can be your vehicle to get out of the city that you grew up in. Esports can be your opportunity to get into a market that you love. Um, you can ask any of the adults in this uh, panel or even in your regular life, what's the one thing you they wish somebody had told them about a job? Get a job that you love. If you love video games, you can apply it anywhere. You don't have to get a major in video games. So you don't have to have game art and design. We need people in video games or in the esports realm who do marketing. We need people who do uh, mass communications. We need people who have marketable skills who also know the market, um, know the demographics, can talk the lingo, can go into a diverse grouping of people and say, hey, you like video games. Okay, cool. What do you play? What, okay, so that is, in essence, what we do here. And those are some of the things that we look for. And that is the direction we are taking esports. Fantastic. Thank you, Patrick, part-time Sith Lord. We're actually going to transition over now to talk about, um, you know, how you can actually get involved in esports at the collegiate level, the recruitment process, scholarships. Uh, we're going to have uh, our team from Newberry uh, jump on in here. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Coach Terrence Knock 
head coach and coordinator of esports here at Newberry College. And uh, we are very excited to be entering into our second year as a varsity level team. Uh, we are a team that is currently underneath the NACE, the National Association of Collegiate Esports uh, Organization, as well as we just joined the New England Collegiate Conference for Esports. Uh, we compete currently in Fortnite, League of Legends, Madden, and Overwatch. We have scholarships available for all four of those titles, and we are expanding each year with Madden and Fortnite entering in as the first year of competition. Our recruitment process uh, begins anywhere from freshman year of high school all the way through senior year. Obviously, as that freshman in high school, you don't have that resume built just yet as far as academics, but also extracurriculars. But once you start going into that junior and senior year of high school, we're able to start talking applications. We can bring you to campus, have you for a visit. We can bring you to our admissions office, talk financial aid and applications and the process for those and see what that cost of attendance will be. Obviously that scholarship is gonna help pay for your college education here at Newberry College. Not quite to full rides just yet, hope to offer those one day, but not quite there yet. We are competitive as far as offering scholarship opportunities uh, with the national average amongst esports colleges. Uh, we hope that we've raised some questions for you to ask about life here at Newberry and what our uh, esports space looks like. Um, we do have an arena to offer the students to play in with 16 high end gaming computers with a dedicated internet service. Um, those computers are provided by a partnership with Gravity Gaming uh, by Bytespeed. So we look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions for me directly about the Newberry College eSports program, we'd be happy to answer those, uh, whether here on this uh, conference call or through email. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Coach Nan. I, I do have a quick question to kind of throw out there at you. For any student who's thinking, hey, I, I think I, I might want to try to be a competitive college esport athlete, and who who would they go about? How would they contact anyone at the collegiate level? What what's the best thing to do? How how would you like somebody to contact you if they were a prospective student? There's numerous databases out there. Um, NACE has one as far as the colleges, what our contact information is, whether it's Newberry or one of the other institutions that's a NACE member. Uh, all of our contact information is there. There are other free platforms like the Collegiate Esports Recruiting Directory. That is a free avenue for students to be able to contact colleges out there in the varsity esports space. Um, obviously, each of us have different offerings as far as titles, as well as space available and staffing and then scholarships. But we are available online and easiest way to contact me Twitter at Newberry Esports, Instagram at New Newberry Esports, on Twitch at Newberry Esports, or even through email uh, available uh, at, at our admissions website and on this presentation. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank We're going to jump on over and now start talking about some of the different career paths. Uh, we're going to invite back uh, Mr. Bernard Allen from Living Arts College. Hey, thank you guys. Uh, one of the things about esports that you may not have considered is what do the career paths look like? Uh, are there things that you can do uh, or with your experience uh, as a gamer uh, through the esports program at any particular college that sponsors an esports program? And, and so uh, several other things that uh, we've talked with us uh, potential students about as far as our career paths. Uh, we, we discovered there's a couple of areas, areas that we concentrate on that you can find uh, career paths that directly relate to esports, uh, such as a professional gamer. You know, those, those that, that want to, uh, that are fortunate enough to be a professional uh, gamer, for example, uh, here in Raleigh, uh, which is home of Epic Games, uh, 25 minutes from our campus, creators of Fortnite, uh, they sponsor competitions. And so uh, there is uh, plenty, there is potential and opportunity in the professional gamer to become a professional gamer. Uh, also, uh, in the production of all of that, you have your caster host, 
uh, or shout caster as, as they're called, uh, the person that, that actually uh, broadcast the, uh, the events, uh, team manager, owner, you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur, uh, maybe you know, you're not the best player, but you have ideas about managing your own team or even own a team. Uh, event planning, uh, event planner, each uh, uh, event. Uh, has someone that has to play in the event, whether it's, whether it's uh, at the uh, different collegiate competitions or even the professional um, tournaments that go on around the country. A content creator, uh, people in marketing, public relations, those are people that uh, help in advertising. And of course, social media management, that's one you may not have even thought there was a such thing, right? Uh, but in eSports, along with other things, uh, social media is huge. And of course, you need individuals uh, who have social media management and become social media managers. Now here at Living Arts College, uh, we also take an additional view with eSports. As I mentioned to you in our overview, uh, we have a animation and game design program. So not only do our students play video games, but guess what? They get to make video games. And if you're good enough, maybe those video games will be at, at some point part of an esports competition. Uh, you never know, right? And so if you have the love not only to play video games, but actual creativity here at Living Arts, we call it applied creativity, where you apply the skills in the arena of creativity here uh, with game design. And some of that, those co uh, career paths that you may choose or may be available to you uh, with the knowledge of, of how to uh, make video games. Uh, our uh, senior game designer, uh, lead game designer, uh, game tester, right? Somebody's got to test that game out uh, before it hits the market. Uh, game art designer, whether you realize or not, every video game has got art all throughout it. Uh, character artist, okay? You need those artists uh, to develop and give good look to characters. Level designer or game level designer. Uh, all games have uh, levels. Uh, of competition. Uh, game animator, those are uh, the people, the animators uh, that put movement to characters and objects and then other things of that sort. Um, and along with uh, game programmer. So those are the people uh, through the um, Unreal and Unity game design engines. Uh, those are the people that help program the gift of different games. And so uh, here at Living Arts College, we have a unique setup. Uh, not only are we get, have gotten into the eSports uh, collegiate competition, but we here also make the games and we also use virtual reality and augmented reality as well uh, using uh, 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 the Oculus Rift uh, and the Hollow Means too as well. And so we do a lot of really creative, uh, specialized and unique things uh, when it comes to uh, game design, uh, particularly through uh, career paths. So um, uh, I, I, I hope you are able to not just uh, look at it more than just playing games because there are opportunities whether directly involvement uh, with e with a background and participation in esports, uh, even to on the creative side, actually creating the games, being involved on that side as well. So I, I appreciate your attention and we'll turn it back over uh, to Keith. Thank you, Bernard. And actually, I, I don't want you to go too far because I, I got a quick question to throw out to you. I'll put you on the spot right here, especially with uh, that, uh, that last grouping of potential career paths. One that really jumps out to me that I'm sure jumps out to a lot of our participants on the panel is that game tester. That sounds like an amazing dream job. Can you speak a little bit to what the job outlook is for that. I know that I often, when I'm out there on the road going to college fairs outside of COVID times, that's a, a, a common job that students do bring up. And, you know, how many game testers are needed out there in today's world? And, and what does that look like? Uh, 
That's a great, great, tremendous question. Um, here uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, we're a little fortunate being that we're located 25 miles from Epic Games. And so uh, they are, have a long list, believe it or not, of careers that they're looking for uh, in video game and, and game testing. Every game that you've played and, and coming forth need game testers. Uh, and those are people who actually work for the individual gaming company uh, that will give their review. They will test out the game uh, before it hits the market. For example, uh, uh, at Black Friday, you have abundance of video games. Well, right before that happens, uh, those games have to be tested. Uh, now, with anything else, uh, game, these career paths are highly competitive. Uh, they are global uh, uh, opportunities. And so uh, you really have to be sharp and on top of your game, uh, but it is not impossible. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I do want to thank all of our panelists uh, for all the information that we are, that was provided today. We hope that you guys have uh, gotten some additional knowledge on the world of esports, but some of these these career paths are what we really wanted you guys to, to be able to see that, uh, you know, gaming can be a hobby, it can be a, a, a path of recreation. We also know that in today's world, uh, gaming can be ways that people help recover from injuries and it can be therapy. Uh, there are lots of different uses for games, but we want you guys to really understand that if you do have a love of games, uh, that there are, are ways that you can actually fit that into your potential career paths. Marry that, that passion for the gaming world uh, with other skills and other passions that you, you have. Um, so we've provided a lot of information and we know that you guys may have some questions. So we want to actually get to that portion where we open up the floor for you guys to throw out questions for us. But before we get to that, we want you guys to be able to see how you can actually get more information uh, on the different institutions sharing with you guys here today. Um, part of the CACRO uh, fair season this year is that each institution will have a chance to put together a 45 minute information session just on their, uh, their university or college. And here you can see the schedule of when St. Andrews, uh, Newberry College and Living Arts College will be hosting those. Uh, they will be in the upcoming next two weeks. Uh, so if you heard something that really struck a chord with you, or if you really want to tune into all three of these different sessions, make sure you actually uh, go to your schedule and register for them. Uh, all three of these different institutions do offer eSport opportunities. Uh, some of them offer scholarships. Uh, some of them offer creative majors that tie directly into um, avenues such as game art and design and business and esport management and things like that. Uh, I am going to put up our this next slide. This is just our contact information. And I'm going to leave that up here on the screen uh, while we actually uh, open it up for question and answer. So if you guys want to go down to the question and answer session uh, section there and uh, toss out any questions that you have, we can throw them out to the panel and uh, and see what sort of answers we can get for you. I'm not seeing any questions on my end. Does anybody else see anything on their end at this point in time? There we go. We got one that just came in. Um, how long it, will it take for esports programs at college to fully develop? Um, so I think both uh, Newberry and St. Andrews have relatively new programs. So I think you guys are both set in a good spot to maybe uh, bounce off of each other and answer that question. Where in Bernard, you guys are in the process, so you can speak to some of that as well. I think it. I think the question is, what do you mean when you say develop? Um, as far as it being, you know, a league or you know, finding competition, that's already here. Um, it's now becoming more public and I think coach can attest to that more like it's now just becoming more public in like being broadcasted on television and being at the collegiate level where before you had esports teams that were more independent. So I, I, I think it depends on what you mean by um, developed when we ask about um, how esports teams are and do you think that's about accurate coach? 
Yeah, with what Patrick said, that's a great point. Um, pretty much every institution across the country has some level of esports, whether that be the true varsity program that is a sponsored program with a full time faculty member with that dedicated facility and scholarship opportunities. Uh, that is growing exponentially every year. But if they don't have that, they might have a club team that might not have a sponsored space. They might have a sponsored space. That really depends. And then there's schools. Most of your major public institutions have at least a club program where the students on campus gather together, watch the competitions together kind of as a, a, a group, as a friend group, as a social group. Uh, and then they might be competing in the collegiate tournaments out there. So yeah, like Patrick mentioned, developed is a very kind of nebulous term in our space right now, but I could see within the next five to 10 years, most major institutions across the United States have some level of varsity program. Great. And there was a little bit of clarification on there from, uh, from the question answer uh, asker, I think. Um, it was, you know, what, how long does it take them to develop to start competing um, intercollegiately across states uh, and even maybe uh, what other opportunities internationally from the uh, at the collegiate level? I, I think that's about, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. I think that's about kind of the same answer. Since there are no physical borders with esports, you will find people like, let's take my, me and my friends, for example, we compete with a group from Japan and then we also compete with a group from a military guys in Germany so if we take that into the college spectrum and like coach said um, it could be the sponsored teams it can be the local teams it can be um, we live in Scotland County Scotland County has a recreational team with the county and they compete with kids in different states so it's it's all a matter of again, what you're looking for when we talk about the development of that space. Yeah, and, and to add on to that, I mean, I know my team, we've practiced and played against colleges anywhere from Washington State up to New York State, down to Texas and California, and we're here in South Carolina. So that just goes to show you how national it really is. And then internationally, just due to the differences in servers, we don't typically compete in a organized fashion. It's more like Patrick mentioned where we might do a, an informal practice or just kind of for fun competition against someone internationally versus that formal competition just due to the, the server differences. And I think it also goes to say like divisions, like division one, II, division two, division three, kind of get shaky when you get into esports because you can you will find a Division One team get worked over by a Division Three team, so it's it's a little bit more interesting than stuff like, uh, you know, a more funding and everything because you can't you can put more money into it, you can't make your thumbs faster. <laughs> that, that is right. We are. We are <laughs> just to jump in quick, we we are when you mentioned. Uh, the development process, I guess what we are doing it beginning uh, from the club level. And so uh, we're starting our recruitment process into the league level. And so uh, we're, we've done ours from ground up. Uh, fortunately with technology and uh, you know, you can compete um, pretty much uh, anywhere that you want to. We encourage our players uh, to also seek our local leagues as well, even outside of, of school. Fantastic. I want to give a shout out to all the students involved in this panel. You guys have some great questions coming in, so keep them coming. Uh, rolling on to another one. We have a student interested in uh, software development and game design. Do you offer courses that teach coding languages used for game development like C++, uh, plus, uh, maybe using game engines like Unity? Uh, yeah, so uh, here, here at Living Arts, uh, we, we use and develop our own games uh, through those uh, game engines, game design engines. Um, our, our students use a, a free student version um, of, of um, Unreal and of Unity. They actually develop their own, own video games and teams and individuals um, that we play here on campus. And we've added to that even using um, 
uh, VR and AR elements uh, for for the Oculus and for the Hollow Lens as well. And so um, I would encourage you. Uh, if you're in high school, make sure if you're able to take a game art design or an animation course um, to, to kind of familiarize yourself with, with, with the process uh, and start creating uh, some simple, what's called first shooter uh, type games um, um, through the game design engine. Great. Um, we got time for uh, some more questions here. We got another one. Um, what, what are some of the positions you can get working in game production and how do you move up in the game design world? I think this question kind of goes back to the previous question of like, do we offer, you know, coding, encrypting, uh, taking three dimensional figures and putting them into a digital space. Um, that is all talent based a lot of and this is this is a truly transparent answer and not an admissions answer a lot of really great coders learned on their own you're going to have to do a lot of coding work on your own if you're going to want to move up in those spaces um some of the best coders some of the best decryptors some of the best encryptors um learned a lot of that on their own uh, so there's not there are schools like um, Living Art College said, um, similar to us in Newberry, that will teach you all of the basics, but all of the real nuance of coding, you learn by doing it and by struggling through it and by going through it. So you, you work your way up in a system the same way. You work your way up in a firm or like let's take unreal for example or even some of the bigger firms in raleigh you work your way up in that by being good at your job and you get good at your job um like our representative from living arts college said by knowing what you're doing and going to an institution where you can grow and work at your craft fantastic well, I, uh, I don't see any other questions in here um, at the moment. So if any of you guys have any last minute questions, uh, fire up those fingers and get them typed in real quick. Uh, I guess I'll throw it out to the panel of there. Is there any other last bit of, or tidbit of information that you feel that the, the students would benefit from? Or do you have a question for another panelist that you think would be good uh, to, to hear an answer for? set up a voicemail box if <laughs> if yeah, that coach is very call <laughs> that brings up as a recruitment if you're interested in being recruited for any sport and uh, you know a, a good point that some some of you uh, on here uh, may be interested in gaming but you may also be a, a traditional athlete maybe you play um, football maybe you play uh, maybe you're on the swim team maybe you play tennis who knows well, but you may be talented in lots of different ways and gaming has been something that, that's been part of that. You know, I guess the question is maybe for coach, hey, can I, can I play multiple sports? Can eSports be, be, be factored in there? I definitely have dual athletes. So I have one on the wrestling team. I have one on the lacrosse team. I have a bunch of music majors that are in marching band. So they do the halftime shows at the football games. I have a couple of football players as well playing our Madden games. So Really, it's about being transparent with that coach and saying, hey, coach, I'm passionate about esports, but also I'm passionate about other activity entered in here. And so that's where you just have that open, honest conversation. Say, look, I would love to do both. How can we make this work? Because, again, if you don't ask that question, your answer is going to be no. So that's where you ask that question, be transparent with the coach. And it brings me into my other point of I'm not – the best at this video game. I'm not the top tier best at the game. Why should I even bother trying out? Well, of course, we're gonna want some de developmental folks where we can build up that roster. We can have a couple of substitutes to come fill in, but also get them better to hopefully bring you up those tiers and get you to that higher tier play. If you're already that top tier, like Patrick and Bernard were already mentioning of practicing your craft and getting better at it on your own time, sweet, that's cool but not all of us are able to get there without that outside coaching and mentorship. So we have that ability to bring in some of those developmental players, put you on our roster to help you grow in your game and hopefully make that starting roster sooner rather than later. 
Wonderful. Thank you guys all. I'm going to turn back over to the trash can. Today. Yes. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We would really appreciate any feedback you can provide today. Um, this is just many of the sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions at CACRAO.org. In about a week, you'll be able to find the sessions recording as well as all of the other sessions recording at CACRAO.org. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys.